All right, greetings, folks. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a template for using tkinter pop-up windows. And I'm using this sort of um, template here that's just kind of a procedural approach, a top-down approach to programming with some just general guidelines. So I've already saved this as tkinter template, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and put that in here for my file name. And then um, what I'm going to do is a brief description of your program. By the way, I have this set up to uh, this particular line of code right here is exactly 80 characters. So it's not a good idea to go beyond this in line length. So keep that in mind as you're doing it. So this is going to be a template for uh, tkinter pop-up window type programs. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and use this guideline here. Uh, one of the first things you do after your comment header is to import any libraries you need to use for your program. And in tkinter, we have three import statements we need. From tkinter, import star. And then we're going to import tkinter.simpledialog. And I'm going to use this primarily for getting input, but you can use this for output. Well, I think it's largely input. So maybe I'll just put a little comment on there. And we'll use message box as well. And that's for output. Okay. Now, these particular comments are more for your benefit. I wouldn't normally put those in there. So if you leave these out, no big deal. I actually makes a lot of sense. So then we have to define any functions, global variables. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do our tkinter window setup in here. So I'm just going to put on here, create a window. And we create a variable called root. Make that equal to TK, like so. And this creates a root project for our windows. Then we're going to create another variable called W. And that stands for window. Equals, and we're going to put label. We're going to create a label for our window. The master, if you notice here, we've got some prompts here. The master is going to be the root. And then any configuration we do on here. So text equals, we're just going to put program title like so. And that's all we're going to do there. That creates our label. And then we're going to do w.pack like so. And then that basically puts the label into this root, which is a TK window. Let's just go ahead and run it to see what happens. Run module, click OK. I'm going to hide this. And all you really see over here is this program title. I'm going to move it over to the side. You'll notice program title right there. That's the text there. We'll go back and show you that again. Now, we would do this if we, you can actually build out full graphical user interfaces using this. For our benefit, we're just going to be doing pop-up windows for now. I'm going to keep it simple. All right, so you see what happens here. Well, one of the problems with this is that this stays open. We've already run the program once, and it still continues to be open. So we're going to jump down to the window at the bottom, and let's do one little cleanup so we don't forget. And that is root.destroy. Now, normally I wouldn't jump down here, but I don't want to forget to close that window. That's the cleanup that is necessary. Let's run it again. And watch what happens. You don't even see the window pop up because it's already closed. All right, we'll see in just a moment. We're going to do something with it. I think we're ready to welcome the user. So we're going to use the message box to welcome the user. So what that looks like is we got to write message box, all one word, dot. I'm going to wait for a moment here because I want to show you what's available on message box. Well, it's really taken a long time here. Um, try it again. Normally it pops up, and we may have to run this once before we can do it. I'm going to go ahead and do the next part. I'm going to do show info. 
And we need, when we do show info, we need to give it two pieces of information. Number one is the label at the top, welcome. Okay, that's the first thing we want to do. We want to indicate what's going to be at the top. We also want to indicate our message, which in this case is welcome to the, and then I'm just going to put a couple underlines here, program dot, 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 indicating if you're going to welcome them and tell them a little about the program, you would probably write a little bit more than this. Okay, well, let's go ahead and run this now, and now we'll see how this works. Click OK. I'm going to hide that so we can see our code. I already showed you the program title, which we see there, but now let's look at the welcome. Notice this string that says welcome appears at the top bar. You'll notice also welcome to the whatever program is the next part here. Notice there's a comma separating them, and the message appears in the white window to the right of the little information logo. We didn't have to figure any of that out. That's what T Kinter message box does for us. I'm going to click OK and watch. That program title will go away as soon as I click OK. See how they're all gone. So that's show info. You might also be interested in what other message box items there are. So let's see if we can get that now. Here we go. You're going to see a lot appear on this window. Anything that's all caps is a constant, and it's to be used in certain circumstances, which we will not go into at this point. What I really want to look at is anything that's all lowercase. So we have an ask, OK, cancel. We have an ask, question. We have an ask, retry, cancel, ask, yes, no, ask, yes, no, cancel, Etc. 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 So there's a lot of things here. Uh, I would get into that in a later tutorial. For now, I just want to show you show error just so you can see the difference. Or I'll put on here. Oops. Like so. Comma. We're gonna give a message. There was a problem, Houston. Dot. 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 All right. Let's go ahead and run this so we can see the difference between those two. And I'll hide this. All right, there's our welcome. Notice welcome's at the top. There's the welcome to the whatever program, dot, dot, dot. I click OK. Now notice in show error, we have that red circle with the X in the middle. So that's the difference between show info, show error. We don't actually need this for it, but I'll leave it up here long enough for you to see it. When you are done, you've played with it, you're fascinated, you're done with it, just delete that line. Okay, I deleted it. Let's talk about getting user input. Okay. In this case, we're going to use a simple dialog to get information from the user and make sure that it's in the right format. So the most common one you see all the time is asking for the user's name. So we're going to create a variable called name. And we're going to set it equal to, and then now we're going to get user input. And then whatever we do is going to store the out, we're going to store the user's name in that variable called name. So that simple dialog, we put another dot here. And in this case, it's ask string. And the reason why is a person's name is going to be a string of text. So we want to make sure we ask for a string. And then we'll put name. What's your name, please? We're just going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, of course, at the very end, we're going to like process some data. Now, let's say you want to know how old they are. You might repeat the process using simple dialog ask integer because someone's age is usually an integer, right? They are that age for the whole year. So you might do the same thing. The only difference would be you might say age equals simple dialog ask integer like so age how old are you okay so that's how you'd ask for a variable and give it a number now the nice thing about this we're just gonna go ahead and run it because I want to show you just something about this so there's our welcome. 
This is our message box. Here is the simple dialogue, ask string. So let's say my name is Fred. So I type in anything and I click OK and there's no problem here. How old are you? Now if I were to say like 47 like this and I tried to put text in here, it wouldn't let me. And what's nice about this is that because I'm asking for an integer, it's going to force me to give it an integer. So now if I put 47 and I click OK, you see it likes it. I'm going to try one more thing and uh, we're going to test it out in just a moment. Okay. If you wanted to get a floating point number, you would put ask float, not integer. And those are really the primary types of user input you're going to be getting anyway. So I will leave the ask float for you to figure out. Not hard at all. You can just go to simple dialog dot ask and then just let it show you what you have available. Let's process the data. Um, usually what happens is you would perform some kind of calculation. If you're going to calculate the wind chill factor, you might ask for the temperature and the wind speed, and then you would perform your calculation here. If you wanted to uh, do any kind of output um, and you needed some prep for it, that's when you would do it. A very common way to do this is many times on your output, you're going to output it as a variable. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it output. And in this variable, I'm going to process the information I have. And we're going to use the format method. So I'm going to put your name is, and I'm going to put little curly brackets here. And I'm actually going to put, uh, I'm just going to do it this way. And you are years old, like so. I'm going to put a dot format, and then I need to give it the variables. And that is name, comma, age, like so. I'll leave that there for just a moment if you need to pause it and get that typed out. So this is a bit of formatting, output. okay? And a lot of times the output is going to be the end result, and many times it's going to take more than one line of code to get all this figured out. Great example, a lot of students are making Mad Lib programs. And in a Mad Lib, the output's going to be an entire story. Okay, So in that case, if you're going to be doing lots and lots of output, you might want to build this string over the course of many lines. Okay, And how you might do that, well, um, I'd have to explain just uh, in a different tutorial. We're running low on time, so I just want to process this, get this done, and we'll go forward. And at this point, to output the results, we're going to use message box. And it's show info. I'm going to put on here results. I'm going to put a comma, and I'm just going to put output. Okay? And notice, I just output the variable here, which is a string. So let's go ahead and run it to test it out. I'll hide this. What's your name? Fred, how old are you? 47. Click OK. And at the end, your name is Fred and you are 47 years old. Some things you may want to do with your results is condense your results over the course of more than one line. So what I might want to do is do a line return right here. All I have to do is use the escape sequence, backslash n. And that's going to do a new line. And then let's say we want to thank the user also. So I'm going to put an output plus equals, which means we're just going to add to the end of our output. We're going to put a new line, and I'm going to tab it over, and I'm going to say thank you for using this program. And now you can see how processing the data, you can do this over the course of several lines of code. Let's run it one last time, making sure everything looks good on the output. And here we go. Now, maybe I wanted an extra line return. So putting a, another backslash n is not a bad idea.
you saw that how the tab works. Let's see if it looks better with two line returns and no tab. So we'll run that again. This time I'll be Dennis. And I'm 47. I'm not old. Your name is Dennis. And you are 47 years old. Thank you for using this program. There we go. Having the extra line return makes it a little bit uh, more readable, a little bit more interesting to look at. Instead of just cramming all your text into one big ginormous line, consider using these kinds of escape sequences. Backslash N means new line, new line here. And there is your code.